Welcome back for another week of the New City Catechism. Our question today is what is prayer? Let's talk about that. So what is prayer? Pastor Jeremy here, and today we're going to be jumping into Psalm 62 and looking at the words of King David to understand better this question and to understand better prayer itself. A simple definition of prayer is simply this. Coming from Psalm 62, we understand prayer to be a pouring out of our hearts before God. Now think of your relationship with your parents or your friends or your significant other Imagine if the only time you talked to them was when you needed something, when you wanted something from them. What kind of relationship would that be? That would be a very one-sided relationship, wouldn't it? In fact, I would say that's not even much of a relationship. Instead, that's you just desiring something and using that person to get what you want. That's not prayer. Prayer isn't only about going to God when we need something. Prayer is meant to be a pouring out of our hearts, a telling of everything in our life to God. Yes, it involves going to God when we are in need, but it's much, much more than that. So let's open to Psalm 62 and see what we can learn about God from his word. I'm at rest in God alone. My salvation comes from him. He alone is my rock and my salvation, my stronghold. I will never be shaken. How long will you threaten a man? Will all of you attack as if he were a leaning wall or a tottering fence? They only plan to bring him down from his high position. They take pleasure in lying. They bless with their mouths, but they curse inwardly. Rest in God alone, my soul, for my hope comes from him. He alone is my rock and my salvation, my stronghold. I will not be shaken. My salvation and glory depend on God, my strong rock. My refuge is in God. Trust in him at all times, you people. Pour out your hearts before him. God is our refuge. Common people are only a vapor. Important people an illusion. Together on a scale, they weigh less than a vapor. Place no trust in oppression or false hope in robbery. If wealth increases... Don't set your heart on it. God has spoken once. I have heard this twice. Strength belongs to God, and faithful love belongs to you, Lord, for you repay each according to his works. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let's pray. Holy God, we come before you desiring to understand what prayer is. Help us to get a deeper and a fuller picture of what it means to pray, of what it means to be in relationship with you in this way. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So you hear it right there from the words and the writings in this psalm of King David, of him explaining and pleading with Israel of how we should relate to God in prayer. Charles Spurgeon says this of Psalm 62. It is a blessed thing to wait only on God. You have proved everything else to be a failure, and now you hang upon the bare arm of God alone. There is certainly enough for us to depend on there. Do you hear the pleading of King David in this psalm? The desire to find our refuge and our strength and to rely solely on God. To find our refuge and our strength and reliance solely on God. God. Prayer isn't about us trying to convince God to give us something that we desire. If somehow our pleading and our persistence in prayer makes God change his mind and give us that thing we've wanted or desired, even if it is something good. No, prayer is about our hearts changing and conforming to God's word and his will. And so when we go before God in prayer and we pour out our hearts, 
as we're defining prayer to be a pouring out of our hearts before God. We are transformed and chained through the power of the Holy Spirit in conjunction with God's living and active word. That is what prayer is. Prayer doesn't just originate from the desires of our heart, but we instead go to God's word and we pray through God's word and we are moved and changed and transformed more into the likeness of Christ. So prayer is absolutely a conversation with God. Prayer is a time where we spend time in communication with God. And to do that, We must be in God's word. That's where prayer begins. When we look at Jesus teaching about prayer in the New Testament, when he breaks down the Lord's prayer and he says, this is how you should pray. Look at the intimacy of as which he addresses God as father. Even as we see in the Lord's prayer, he recognizes God's holiness, God's action in this world, what God's will to be done here on earth as it is in heaven. We recognize our own sinfulness, our our propensity to lean towards our temptations and desire them instead of the daily bread that we receive everything we need from God. This isn't just about going before God and saying, God, I need this, I need this, I need this, I need this. But often that's what our prayer life turns into. Instead of a pouring out of our hearts, instead of finding refuge and strength and uh, shelter from the turbulence of life, we go to God asking for the quick fix. And we wonder why it doesn't work. We wonder why we're not seeing any change. Because all we want out of prayer sometimes is a fix to the problem in front of us. When God instead just wants us. So you might be wondering, okay, So if prayer is this pouring out of our hearts before God, how do I do that? I I don't know how to pray. I don't know where to begin. I hate praying out loud in front of people, that's for sure. Well, I'd encourage you, if you're worried or self-conscious about what prayer out loud might be or how to pray, start writing down your prayers. Start simple. Write what's on your heart as you read Scripture Open up your reading for that day and read maybe through the Gospels. And as you encounter something, pray through that scripture verse. What is our response to what we've just read in Psalm 62? Look at verse 1. I'm at rest in God alone. My salvation comes from Him. So maybe as a response to Psalm 62 verse 1, we thank God for salvation from Him. We ask Him to... Help us to find rest alone in him. And we pour out our heart and say, God, I confess the sin of many times finding rest in everything but you. And I wonder why I'm exhausted and why I'm tired. I wonder why I feel like there's just a haze over everything and nothing seems to click. God, help me find rest in you. You are my salvation. That's just one verse, friends. The secret to a deep prayer life is all found in opening our scriptures. That sounds too simple, but it is true. Dive into God's word. Pour out your hearts before him, and you will be living into what it means to be in communion with God through prayer. I hope and pray that this has just sparked an interest, a desire, something in you to say, I need a better prayer life. I need a deeper prayer life. Because the truth is, we all do. There's no perfect prayer life. We should always be striving for more and more and more of Him. And may that be our prayer as we close today. So what is prayer? Prayer is a pouring out of our hearts before God, all based on his word. Friends, thank you so much for joining us as we've looked at this next question in the New City Catechism. And I hope that this has excited you to try something new, to to dive deeper into your time in the word and to dive deeper into your time in prayer. Thank you so much. And we'll catch you on the next one. Bye.